uh, stereotactic frames that there is, I don't know if I have a picture of it here. There were frames used in the 1800s, you know, very rarely. There's something called Zernov's encephalometer, which was used for a handful of procedures. But, but most people trace our current frames uh, back to this gentleman who is Sir Victor Horsley, who was one of the pioneering neurosurgeons in England. Uh, and he and a, 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 a research collaborator of his, uh, Clark, uh, developed this stereotactic frame. They did not use it on humans, they used it in animals, and but sort of theorized that this would be a way to, uh, you know, sort of precisely get into different points in the brain. And, and uh, really, so, you know, and, and this, if, you, if, you, if any of you have done uh, research in a lab where you're doing stereotactic procedures on rodents or, or small animals, the devices that we use, and I think COP makes one, uh, look almost exactly like this. They have the same ear bars and the same little uh, probes and, and things, you know, uh, very, very similar. Um, this was adapted almost, you know, sort of verbatim, you can see here in 1947. Uh, so Spiegel and Weichs in 1947, you know, ad adapted the, the Horsley-Clark frame. They did it by, at first, uh, by creating a, a plaster cast. They would put this thing on the patient's head, they would put plaster, they would get x-rays, and then they would, would put these, you know, this structure on the top. And, and it is a rectilinear frame. You just you basically drop probes from the top down to wherever you're going. And that, you know, it worked well. It was, it's somewhat limited in the way it can be used. Here you can see it being used in one of the first surgeries. And it was at that time in the, you know, late 1940s, early 1950s, used again for movement disorders and psychiatric disease. And, and this really set off something of a revolution. I mean, these, all of a sudden we were doing these procedures and we could, you know, we could get to places in the brain that we couldn't get to before. In just a few years, it was modified to create the Lexel frame. And so here's the Lexel frame, I think actually being used uh, as an early gamma knife. This is a gamma radiation probe and they swung the thing into different positions to treat uh, tumor, but, but, you know, remarkable, just for those of you who have used the Lexel frame, it, it looks very much like this today. It has not changed a lot. And so I really think that was a major innovation in, in neurosurgery. What, what they, what you can see, what Lexel did is he combined the XYZ coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates that sort of map the brain that we use sort of standardly. Uh, with a polar coordinate system where you could swing the probe so that no matter where you had centered the frame, you could pick any infinite number of trajectories to get there more safely. Uh, and so that, I think, was a real innovation, and it's just a very effective way to perform surgery. You can see this quote from, uh, from Richard, who was one of the first uh, uh, surgeons, he was the second president of our uh, WSSFN society. And he said, for the first time, it was possible to operate on subcortical parts of the brain without damaging the overlying brain structures, and thus to alleviate diseases which had previously been difficult or impossible to treat. So, you know, really changed the way that we thought and, about and performed surgery. He also points out, which I think is important, that in doing so, this really extended our knowledge of the brain. Uh, and so these things have always been married for functional neurosurgery, sort of the idea that you are able to intervene and treat disease, but you're also learning something about the brain. And so I think for those of us in the field, that, that concept is, is important. Uh, there are today, you know, dozens of different frame options. The Lexel frame still exists. You can see that's basically the same structure that was there before. Uh, there are others, the CRW frame. There are robotic frames, which are essentially just an automated way of doing the same thing that the Lexel frame does. Uh, there's something called the Starfix platform, which is what I use, which is a 3D printed uh, platform that um, kind of does the same thing. This next frame, which is guided by a stealth. There's Clearpoint, which is actually a real-time intra, uh, you know, uh, MRI guided uh, adjustments that you can make in the in the MRI suite. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.